In this video, we're going to take a look at a toolpath called Area Clearance. So you would use this toolpath if you wanted to create a pocket or a recess within your material. So here you can see a six inch square box that I've drawn and I want to machine this so it's a recess. So if I go to toolpaths and then the third option along is create area clearance toolpath. So if I click that, it opens up the area clearance toolpath. So first of all, I'll just show you how this works at a really basic level, okay? So start depth is zero, finish depth is how deep I would like this recess to be. So let's say I want it to be an eighth of an inch. Then select add to add a tool to the list. So let's use, let's say half inch, which is the largest one that I have. Click select, and then that adds that to the tool list. You can then change the step down, feed rate, etc. any of the options that you want, okay? Now you can also add ramping to this. So I would advise you to watch the ramping video in order to understand how that works. So ramping, basically rather than plunging straight down in the Z, it will come down at an angle and it stops you burning material, for instance, because there's not so much heat generated on the tool. So let's set up my material. So click there. My material, I already have it set up to be a quarter of an inch. Your material Z0 is all dependent upon your CNC machine. So at the top, if you normally set your Z datum to be at the top of the material, or at the bottom, if you set your zero to be on the wise board. Don't worry about model position. That's just relevant for 3D machining. So select OK, and that will set up my material block. And then I can just select Calculate. Okay, so what this does, if I take a look in the 3D view and rotate around, and I'll just turn my vectors on, and also let's turn off that first light bulb because I don't need to see it. What this has done, it has machined down to a depth. The depth that I said was an eighth of an inch. Okay, so if I right click, simulate toolpath, it gives me a simulation. Okay, so it's created this pocket or recess for me. So let's delete the simulation. Now, when you do delete the simulation, it will turn off the vectors. So just turn them back on by toggling the vector visibility. So let's say that I wanted to do this in two cuts. So if I just enter, let's say, point 0.1 and calculate, turn off that first light bulb, and I just zoom in. Rotate around, you can see that it's doing this in two cuts. Okay, so let's put this back to be half an inch, and I know that it will go to the bottom of this. Make sure that you select your vector and select calculate. Turn off that first light bulb, and it's just going to a depth. Now, if we take a look at the plan view of that, you can see that what's happening is it's coming across in X, stepping over in Y, coming back across in X. And then at the last moment, it's then doing a, a finishing pass. So if I use the simulation control bar, and let's just zoom out so you can see this, and then press play, you can see that it's doing all of that, and then it finally it does a finishing pass, okay? So let's delete that and go back to my 2D view. Personally, I only really use the raster when I'm doing square or rectangular shapes. If anything is curvy or it's got some sort of form to it, then I would tend to use an offset. And you can choose when to do this, whether you would like the offset to start on the inside and then come out to the edge, or start from the outside edge and then come inwards. So if I calculate that, what this does 
it offsets the actual vector that's selected and then machines it. So this is useful if you're doing anything that's quite curvy. Right, so let's take a look at a few of the options. Okay, so let's do something a little bit different with this. So if I turn off the toolpath, so it's still there, I've just turned it off. And what I'm going to do is just draw a circle on the center of that. I'm going to do it quite large, let's say like that. Okay, and what I want to do is machine the area between the square and the circle. So if I select both of those and then calculate, it will machine the area between them. So if I simulate this, you can see that it's machined that area. Okay. So if I go back to the 2D view, the one thing that I don't really like is that it's not coming around here and it's not machining at all going through there. Okay, that's because the tool that I'm using is too large to machine that. Okay, and it just can't physically get in there. So what I'm going to do is add a tool. So I can add multiple tools to this. So let's say I add a quarter of an inch tool. And then this gives different options. So if I select the half an inch, you see how the clearance strategy is still offset. But if I go to the quarter of an inch, it's by default raster. So I'll change that to offset and then calculate. So what's happening now is that the half an inch is getting so far in there. And then these smaller additional tool paths are what the quarter of an inch tool is doing. So if I zoom out, I still can't get in there. So if I use an even smaller tool, I can add another one. Let's try an eighth of an inch tool. And again, set that as an offset and calculate. You can see that that's starting to get in there, but it's still not going in there. Now, if you're not sure about the size of something, what you can do is come down to model, drop down at the top and select the measure tool. And then what I'm going to do is just lock onto there and lock onto there. So this is telling me that this is a 0.1 inch wide piece. So I need to make sure that I use a tool that's smaller than that. So let's add another tool and let's just use the smallest one that I have, which is a 16th of an inch tool. And then offset that and calculate. And then that goes in there. So what will happen is it goes in with the half an inch, then a quarter, then the eighth and then the sixteenth. OK, now if I wanted to, I could just remove that one and that one. So I'm just left with a half an inch tool and the sixteenth of an inch tool. So if I calculate that now, the tool path will look different because I haven't got these two tools. OK, so what's happening now is this larger tool path is the half an inch. And then the smaller section round here is the 16th of an inch toolpath. So if I delete that simulation and then simulate that toolpath, you can see it's giving me what I want. Now, there are a couple of options on here. For instance, allowance. So if you wanted to add material or remove material, you could do that here. So if I zoom in and maybe let's make that a negative and let's say 10 foam and calculate that. So that's made the whole section larger. So did you see how it came out? So it's made it a bit larger. If I set that back to zero, you see it come in and it's the exact size, okay? You've also got final tool allowance. So if, let's say for instance, this 
half an inch, it can actually finish the sidewall just here. And that's what it's doing. And this smaller tool is coming in just up to there. Now, if you didn't want that and you wanted the smaller tool to actually finish this edge and finish this edge, then what you could do is add a final tool allowance. So if I were to leave on there, let's say Tim Fu again, and calculate, you see how it gives me these lines now. So what that means is that the smaller tool is creating a finishing pass around the edges of this. So that's pretty much how you use the area clearance toolpath.